Hello there, I'm Madeline O'Hare, back again with the American Atheist Forum. And I'm John Murray, the president of American Atheists. Uh, we have with us a guest from Houston, Texas, uh, Mr. Don Sanders, who is the uh, chapter coordinator for American Atheists. Uh, on this program, we want to talk about something with which uh, American Atheists has had some to do over the years, and that's the Boy Scouts. Uh, <clears throat> there have been a number of American Atheist magazines uh, that have been devoted uh, to the issue uh, as we have gone back and forth with various um, both scouts and parents over the issues of issue of the religiosity inherent in the Boy Scouts and the fact that <clears throat> generally the Boy Scouts really don't want to have anything to do with boys who are atheists or come from atheist families uh, and that their official credo uh, embraces a God and country type of thing. Uh, also, they are um, uh, one of the requirements uh, for their highest level of scouting uh, is a God, what they call a God and country merit badge is one of the required merit badges for you to reach their highest level, their Eagle Scout level. And there have been problems with that with uh, persons who were uh, atheists or from atheist families who had uh, become involved with the scout program and found at some point that they couldn't go any further because they couldn't earn that particular merit badge. So there have been all kind of problems. Oh, with we've had big fights with religion. Them. Uh, that is being litigated in at least two states of the Union, in yes. Illinois and California right now, uh, with regard to that issue too. Uh, and also with regard to the fact that they are an organization which has been chartered by Congress along the way, too. Uh, and we feel because of that, atheists feel because of that, that they should be more uh, open with regard to um, atheists. And it's probably the most sacrosanct organization for youngsters in the United States, Girl Scouts and Boy yeah, Scouts. Yeah, next to maybe something like the... Uh, YMCA or YWCA. Well, those uh, people are and, older. And those, those are older and they were founded um, with a more decidedly religious taint to them from the beginning. Uh, they were f uh, founded to protect um, youth from going wayward in the big cities of the at the turn of the century. But the Boy Scout um, uh, organization has always had uh, God and church as one of its principal attributes. Uh, I would say that probably I wouldn't be uh, remiss in stating that the vast majority of Boy Scout troops use churches of some denomination or the other church oh, yes. facilities yes. to meet in or to use as their headquarters uh, and then from there go out on the most popular thing that everybody associates with Boy Scouts, which is their camping and which is their camping endeavors. So we were quite interested, having gone all kind of rounds with the Scouts and with the Boy, uh, with the boy Scouts, not the Girl Scouts, the American Atheists or any atheist group really hasn't gone any rounds with the Girl Scouts yet, but the Boy Scouts we have. Well, we have uh, uh, one girl who's uh, suing in order to get into the Boy Scouts. Yes. But I think that what we want to do tonight, which is so delightful, Remember that no atheist may get into this organization. So we are going to report on a totally religious organization where everybody believes in God, right? Right. And they have to say they believe in God and work to show they believe in God. And we would like to uh, talk about this God-ridden organization that has cleansed itself 
of every atheist conceivable, right? Well, go with it. Well, it came, you know, it came uh, as quite a wonderment to us, uh, given this whole morality background of the Scouts, um, that it has uh, recently come out uh, that the Scouts are a harboring place for pedophilia, uh, and that this is a great uh, opportunity, uh, a great, essentially gigantic meat market for people who like to <laughs> molest little boys. Uh, to go and to find this great supermarket of young um, uh, men Virgin. or boys <laughs> <laughs> to to exploit, and it's kind of a a a supermarket for that. Um, as one person put it, uh, in some of the studies that have been going on, the volunteer organizations such as the Boy Scouts are just perfect for pedophiles in the sense that they are just the ideal situation if they can get to a large number of kids to kind of check out which ones might be the easiest victims." Uh, end quote. And nobody, I think, had really thought of the Boy Scouts in this wise. I know we have done at least one program in this American Atheist Forum in the more than 10 years that it's been on the air. Uh, about priests in the United States and the pedophile priests and how that is rather rampant within the Roman Catholic Church. And one would suspect that taking grown, should be sexually active men and telling them they can never have sex, something's got to give. Um, but to have the boys in a, what we'll see in a minute, is a rather huge both national and international organization. Uh, to be uh, uh, targets of molestation uh, from something that holds itself out to be completely uh, morally straight. Is that the phrase with, with the Scouts? I believe it is. Uh, in their yeah. Scout Oath that they will be morally straight is one of the things. Can we pepper uh, this as you go along yeah, with some result, of these little yeah, things? Yeah. The result of this is that, and let me, let me give you some of the over, first, okay. overall statistics first, um, which are that more than once a week for the past two decades, on the average, a Cub Scout, Boy Scout, or Explorer has reported being a sexually abused by a Scout leader. What's it with that? So those are the ones that are now, saying so. Those yes. are the ones that are reporting it, right. that are saying so. So if a parent is sending uh, uh, his or her child to the Boy Scouts to learn uh, to do duty to God and country and uh, instill morality and decency, uh, one had better uh, check and first see who the Boy Scout leader is and to check some background uh, because the child may be uh, um, I, well, a continuing no, theme yeah. here a is that the kids go for years without reporting it. Yeah, exactly. It's a because thing. the child, of course, uh, and usually in this situation, is going to be uh, psychologically intimidated, uh, well, this frightened. Is also, uh, it's very dangerous. For this the child. is also very close to the recent scandals with regard to uh, daycare centers. Too, oh yes. yes. Because essentially, part of the scout thing is kind of a babysitting service on sure one night a week or something for parents too because it's a place to send their to send their kids uh, where they'll be with other kids and be out of their hair exactly uh, too um, but going on with some more of the general statistics at least 1151 scouts 1151 have reported being abused by their leaders over the past 19 years making sexual abuse more common in scouting than accidental deaths and serious injuries. In that time, uh, 19 years, at least 416 men have been arrested or banned from scouting for molesting the boys in their care. Um, one of the things we'll be getting to a little later is a listing of those 416 incidents where we'll be kind of going down and just quoting every fifth or sixth one or, or tenth one or something to give you a flavor of it, an idea of what they have been banned for. Now, I think probably first I ought to try to give a little bit of background information so you'll know what we're talking about, uh, about the Boy Scouts of America. 
The Boy Scouts of America were incorporated in 1910 in Washington, D.C., so they're, what, uh, 81 years old uh, this year, uh, by a William D. Boyce. And William D. Boyce was a publisher of the Chicago Saturday Blade and the Chicago Ledger. And he had them incorporated. Congress gave the Boy Scouts a federal charter in 1916, uh, which prevented other groups from using the Boy Scouts of America name. They got a federal charter. Uh, then, meanwhile, about the same time over in England, Lord Robert Baden Powell started a scouting movement in England in 1908, and he came over and visited the United States to help the organization and incorporation here. And we'll have more to say about him later, too. Yes, the founding, uh, now, the founder of it. The scouts are divided into essentially, I'm just, just, just the boys, not the girls, are divided into essentially three areas, three kinds of scouts. And they start with the Cub Scouts. Oh, that's Cub a good Scouts, age to get them. You must be at least eight or have completed the first grade uh, through a, uh, you must be at least eight and can't be older than age, age 11 and must have completed the first grade. Uh, cubs belong to what are called dens, and they're usually about six to ten boys in each den. And the uh, uh, dens are part of what are called cub packs. The den leaders are usually women. Okay, so on that level, they have women. Uh, there are very iniquity. few, very few sexual <laughs> abuse cases, of course, reported uh, uh, to the Boy Scouts from the Cub Scout level over the past 19 years. That's because the um, kids are afraid to report. At the end of 1989, there were, to give you an idea of the size, 52,978 packs uh, of. Uh, Cub Scouts on the Cub Scout level by the end of 1989. Then you have the Boy Scouts themselves. With the Boy Scouts, you must be at least 11. That is, when you reach age 11, you can graduate from the Cub Scouts to the Boy Scouts. And you have to have, or, or you have to have completed fifth uh, grade. And the Boy Scouts run up through age 17. Uh, Boy Scouts belong to what are called troops. Um, and uh, the troops most frequent thing that they do is to go on camping trips, mm -hmm. uh, led thereby by what are called scoutmasters, who are usually men. Uh, the vast majority of the sexual abuse cases reported uh, to the Boy Scouts over the ni past 19 years have involved that, this middle segment, the sure. Boy Scouts. Uh, at the end of 1989, there were 46,830 troops of Boy Scouts. Uh, to give you an idea, it's a very big organization. Now there are other, there are a couple other types of scouts. There are tagger cubs uh, who are ages seven and eight, which are kind of a junior, junior, junior group, mm -hmm. and explorers who can be between ages 14 to 21, and an explorer can be either male or female. Those are the ones that Ritter okay. does. And there are <laughs> very also very few sexual abuse cases uh, within the Explorer class. Almost all of it is within the Boy Scouts of uh, the three, of the three uh, levels. That's because right. at that last level they have learned to love it. <laughs> okay, Let's so. Let's get to some of these cases. Now. It's too good to be true. <laughs> each year from 1971 through 1989, which is 18 years, an average of at least 21 male scout leaders and camp workers were banned from scouting or arrested for sexual misconduct with Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Explorers. Those acts in general ranged from proposing sex and fondling boys in their sleep to performing oral sex and intercourse with them. So it was the whole kind of range. Now these are just the, the general overall findings. During that time, an average of at least, that 18 or 19 years, an average of at least 60 scouts were reported abused each year, with some of them abused dozens of times before they told anybody. If they told anybody. If they told anybody. Yes. Scout, the scout officials tried to hide the sex abuse problem from the public and from the press, and sometimes from parents and police both. National scout officials have given 
uh, the news media incorrect information on a number of occasions about the extent of the abuse in scouting, and in a few cases, the local scouts uh, uh, officials uh, may have violated or did violate state or county or city uh, child abuse reporting laws by not uh, reporting the suspected abuse to authorities as they're supposed to. Most of the abuse took place in, uh, well, of course, camping trips. Um, and that was the most popular place for the scout leader to get after the boys when they were out there in those little dark tents, yeah. those little pup tents. Come on, let's get to the good Over part. Over the past five years, the Boy Scouts of America and local scout councils have agreed to pay at least $15 million to settle lawsuits brought by families of abused scouts. Uh, so they've gone the route of settling out of court. The molesters often join troops and molested boys even after being caught. At least 21 of the men had prior criminal records, mostly for sexual offenses with children. Other had left troops of uh, youth groups under suspicion, uh, but were not charged, okay? All of these molesters came from all walks of life. They were priests, policemen, teachers, truck drivers, laborers, lawyers, anything that you can ima imagine. They weren't any particular group or kind of people. They just had one thing in common, pedophilia. That's right. <laughs> the vast majority of abuse in scouting committed was committed by a small group of volunteers, that is, male scoutmasters and assistant scoutmasters who number about 147,000. The victims oh, are... Oh, only 147,000. That's right. a small Now, that's a small group out <laughs> of the right. large thing. Um, uh, the victims are usually from one group, Boy Scouts who age and age from 11 to 17, and there are 959,000 of them as of the end of 1990 uh, that are in that, that kind of age, uh, age range. Uh, don't take up the whole program so with all of that stuff. Let's get the All of stuff. these, uh, 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 you know, of these people, uh, they... Uh, had a variety of motives, a variety of styles. Uh, one of the most um, um, repeat offenders uh, was a man uh, in uh, Illinois uh, who would go in and...